Welcome to Worship at St. Andrews by the Sea in San Clemente, California. This is our online worship celebration. I'm Pastor Eric Smith. Grace and peace to you. It's a special day. Every day is a special day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and welcome to Online Worship at St. Andrews. I'm Emily Brett Howard, the Director of Program Ministries. We have some transitions happening among us. As you no doubt have been following, this Sunday is Pastor Eric's last Sunday with us at St. Andrews. We offer our heartfelt thanks for four years here with us, as well as for 40 years of ministry in the United Methodist Church. Pastor Eric, we are all better for your leadership among us, and we are grateful for your many years of ministry here and in the larger church. We wish you and Karen well as you embark on this new and exciting chapter of your lives. Thank you both for the, all of the love and care, kindness and leadership, and so many gifts that you have given us over these years. We have some additional gifts to offer you later in our online service here and at the in-person service. It is also Joanne Zapp's last week at St. Andrews. For more than five years, Joanne has been managing our front office. She has not only kept the things running there, but improved many of the existing systems we have. She has been a joy to work with and we will miss her wonderful presence in the office. We wish her well on this next adventure and Joanne, we thank you for your service. My personal thanks to Joanne, Pastor Eric, and to Karen for all of their time at St. Andrews. Each of them has been a delight to work with, and I will miss them all, as well as I think our larger family of faith will, too. These departures mean that not only are these new chapters opening for each of these staff members who leave us at this point, but also for our larger church and those staff members who are yet to come. God is clearly at work in St. Andrews, and we place our faith and our trust in this time of transition in God. 
We pray for God's continued guiding hand as we move forward and welcome Pastor Carl next week as we continue the search for new staff members and most importantly, as we continue to build God's kingdom here on earth. The constancy of your support for this family of faith, your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, it is all deeply felt and very appreciated. And I thank you. mystery box today. Oh, Me. Clara. Clara put this in the mystery box. Do you know what it is? Nope. All right. Look. Can I shake it? Gently. Very gently. It's kind of heavy. Okay. Ooh, it's rolling. I think I have a guess. Okay, what's I your guess? it's Clara's black kit, little glass clit kitten. Clara's black glass kitten. No. No, that's not it. All right, let's find out then. What is it? Don't, no, I'm gonna, I don't want it to jump out at you. Ooh, all right, what is this? It's a bottle with a piece of paper with nothing in it. Is there, is there a message in this bottle? No. No, it's a blank message. So we could open it up and write a message. And then, and then we could slip it into somebody's bed. And we slip it into somebody's bed? <laughs> because it doesn't, it, we, we don't live close enough to send it across the world. Well, we could, but the ocean's not that far. We could do this. True. All right, why did you put this in here for us? Because, um, because I thought it would stump you. It would stump me? <laughs> no way. No way. You know what? Um, when I think of messages in a bottle, of course, I think of the ocean, and in times gone by, we people would send messages out, of course. But I, um... I think of messages across time and space, and I think of God's love across time and space for us. And some of those messages got written down in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. And they got saved and preserved for us, and some of them didn't. And we, we know that there were other Gospels and other books in the Bible that didn't, or books that could have been included in the Bible but didn't make it in. So those messages didn't make it across time and space. Um, but the message of God's love is pretty timeless. And the message of God's love comes to us in all sorts of unexpected ways, mm -hmm. including in bottles. So that's what I think of. It doesn't matter how much time goes by or how much space there is. God's love is always available. And it comes to you in unexpected ways, like messages in bottles. I could write, I love you so much, and then send it out. And then you somebody could. would know that they were loved. That's true. All right, let's pray. You hold on to that for me. Let's pray. Okay. Dear God, dear God, thank you, thank you for loving me, for loving me, and thank you, and thank you for all the ways, for all the ways that you show me you love me, that you show me you love me, and help me, and help me to love other people, to love other people like Jesus loves me, like Jesus loves me. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me? O Lord, our God, your creation is full of glory, towering mountains and deep valleys, dense forests and expansive deserts, fathomless depths of blue below and immeasurable heights of blue above. When we look at the minuscule world revealed by the microscope and the massive universe revealed by the telescope, we are in awe at the complexity and the simplicity, the order and the chaos, and the infinite variety of color everywhere. As we watch all the creatures of the earth, we marvel at the purpose, the direction, the design, with so much freedom, openness, and creativity. We see the diversity of humankind, 
newborns and children, young adults and centenarians. We see so much capacity for good and evil. We find amazing intelligence for creativity and for destruction, for the ability to nurture growth or cripple it. We are astonished at the extravagance of your gifts. We thank you for your church, for St. Andrews by the Sea. We thank you for all who have come and gone before us today, for brothers and sisters in faith who shared the common purpose of the gospel. May their memories be blessed. We thank you for all who are the faithful of St. Andrews in this day. May your purposes be revealed for your church in the days ahead as a new thing takes place. We pray for Pastor Carl and the leaders of St. Andrews as they follow your guidance into the future. We pray for effectiveness, the transformation of many lives, and the compassion of our Lord Jesus to be evident through the mission and ministry of your church, this church. I am grateful to have served St. Andrews, and I ask for your blessing upon these people. Please join with me as we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture reading is from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. 
It's one of the most valuable of Paul's letters for the light it throws upon the character and mind of the great apostle and for its vigorous presentation of the gospel. It portrays vivid pictures of the actual life and challenges faced by a particular church at the middle of the first century. In this passage, Paul points out that the work of building the church is shared in the common purpose of its leaders. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as a spiritual people, but rather as people of flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants, working together, you are God's field, God's building. Let the church hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. Karen and I bought our home in 2016. It's our retirement home single story with a backyard large enough to add a swimming pool, which we did. It's a grandchild magnet. The house was built in 1979. As Karen and I have worked on the yard, we've sometimes felt like forensic landscape architects. There are clues of owner's past in the layers of landscaping, along with the remains of several attempts at installing irrigation systems. We find ourselves asking questions like, when do you think this tree went in? Well, it's our turn to plant and shape the landscape now. We are stewards of the property. Others owned it before us. Others will own it after us. Karen and I have a growing vision of what and how we want the place to be. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes homeowners come in and like things as they are. Other times they transform the place to become what they want it to be. Either way, it's yours to take care of. That's how I felt about St. Andrews. We got introduced to each other, and then Mike Weishman showed me some cracks in the parking lot asphalt. During these past four years, I have learned more than I ever wanted to know about geotechnical engineering. Today's scripture reading is about stewardship. Paul wrote to the Corinthians about their evolving process in the life of their young church in Corinth. Here's the text. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose. St. Andrews was planted by Maxie Dunham in 1964. It was watered by Charles Hamby, Don Inlay, Don Bassett, Larry and Phyllis Tyler Wayman, C.A. McLean, Jim King, Steve Petty, Paula Ferris, A.D.L. DePano, and me. Next up is Carl Stuckenberg. Along with the Apostle Paul and Apollos, we share a common purpose. There is always the common purpose. 
This is our common purpose, to share the good news of Jesus' vision of the kingdom of God. Let's remember what that good news is. First, the kingdom of God has come to you. That's an announcement. To invoke the name kingdom of God compels an encounter. Whether or not the specific words are spoken, God's realm is presented. We can embrace it, we can accept it, we can ignore it, or we can outright reject it. But it comes to us in a moment. It's the word of God spoken to us, and we decide what happens next. Second up, God is with you now. God is not out there somewhere. You can stop searching. God is not waiting for you to climb to the mountaintop or undertake some odyssey. God is with you now. God's Spirit is within you. That's good news. Next up, life is a gift. We've been given the ultimate gift. God is the creator. In the words of the psalmists, God formed us within our mother's wombs. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Wisdom is to recognize that life is finite and that it is an opportunity and an adventure. And as we embrace God's presence and God's purposes for living, we can know the deepest joy of the human experience. Life can be divine. You are forgiven by God for everything right now. Oh, what grace that is. What freedom to be released from all that has bound you. And not only are you released, you are empowered to forgive others. What a life transforming gift. Everyone is in. Everyone is welcome into God's realm. No exceptions. There's no pointing out the shortcomings, the mistakes, nor the sins of anyone. If that happens, someone has gotten the wrong address. Everyone is included in God's kingdom. And one more. We are the stewards of this planet. It's up to us to see that humanity continues to live on a habitable earth. God put it here. God put us here. And God left us in charge of it. Well, it needs some tender care these days. God will help us heal the earth, but we are God's instruments for doing the work. We are God's hands, we are God's feet, we are God's voice, and we are God's compassion. Now it's time to care for this earth in new, creative, and healing ways. And so, that's the good news of Jesus Christ. It hasn't really changed since Paul wrote to the Corinthians, except our care for the earth is a far more urgent issue than it has ever been. One of the more disturbing things we have read of late has been the move of some Catholic bishops to legislate the withholding of communion from President Biden. While I'm not down on Catholics or pro-lifers, there is something deeper in this. It's called sin, and this Sin is about abusing the grace of God. Now, I understand the politics and the theology of the bishop's position. They prescribe that President Biden can't hold the opinion nor influence the laws of the land in a manner that does not acknowledge and protect the sanctity of unborn human life and still receive communion in the church. They are wrong to do this but not because of their opposition to a woman's right to choose or fetal research or abortion. No, those are carefully thought out opinions and they have every right to hold them as anyone does. They are wrong because of something else. They are wrong because they are trafficking the grace of God. This is the same error that led to the Reformation 500 years ago, and it's a reminder for us. God's church is not an institution. God's church is people who turn their hearts and minds to God's way. Our hearts can be right with God and yet hold opinions that are wrong in the minds of others. 
any bishop who is enforcing the values of the institution rather than offering the grace of God through the institution has placed him or herself in spiritual jeopardy, and the church they represent suffers. Like so many politicians, the sin of these religious leaders is hubris. The difference is that politicians can own it, and religious leaders can't. The gospel is for everyone. Jesus hung out with people who, according to the values of the religious leaders of that day, were the worst possible sinners. Yet Jesus didn't condemn them or anyone else. With one exception, he condemned those who withheld God's grace. That's the model for our faith. That's the model for the church. That's the model for St. Andrews. Feel that water. May it be so. Well, it's time to go. Karen and I have appreciated your kindness, your friendship, your hospitality, your generosity. We will enjoy following St. Andrew's unfolding story of faith for all of our days to come. Amen. Good morning. I'm Hal Miller, Chair of the Staff Pastoral Relations Committee for St. Andrews by the Sea. And I'd like to congratulate Eric on his 44 years of ministry with St. Andrews by the Sea, but also for his 40 years of ministry with the Methodist Church. He's brought us through some difficult times with the pandemic, and the last four years have been a very successful year, years for St. Andrews by the Sea. And we'd like to thank him for all his work, all his ministry, and wish him the best of luck in his retirement to both Eric and his wife Karen and his family as they go forth on this new adventure. Good luck to you folks. This is the end of our time together. I wish you every blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace all the days of your lives. Amen. Hi, Pastor Eric. Thank you, thank you so much for being our spiritual leader and have a great and blessed retirement. I know you're gonna be continuing to lead us, many people uh, in your time and may it be your family, may it be your congregation. To us, you were a big blessing. Thank you very much and hope you have a great retirement. Hi, Eric. I wanna wish you a very, very happy retirement. And uh, don't do as I do, but do as I say, pace yourself. Uh, I have enjoyed all the time that I've gotten to know you and to come to this beautiful church, St. Andrews by the Sea, and I wish you and Karen all the very, very best. I'll miss you. Bye for now. Well, happy retirement, Eric. I know you will enjoy it very much. Um, I'm hoping you will be uh, able to play a lot more golf. I'm certainly glad that we had a chance to, to play golf together here uh, at Talega, and I wish the, you all the best, so hit them long and straight. Congratulations on your retirement, Eric, but as you know, a pastor really never gets to retire. Good luck. Find the time to do the things that you love. 
and we will sorely miss you in the coming months. Congratulations, Pastor Eric and Karen. We'd like to thank you for all the uh, service and, and talent that you brought to St. Andrews by the Sea during the last four years, and best of luck to you in retirement. Safe travels, thanks. Thanks, Eric, from Sierra Winds. We have, we look forward to all of your uh, meetings. We'll miss you. Hello, I know you're going to enjoy your retirement. We live in such a fabulous place and your wife is with you. Enjoy every minute with your grandkids. Happy retirement. Well, Pastor Eric, uh, well, I wish you a long and happy retirement. I want to thank you for all your time and energy here at the church and uh, thank you for your faith and support of me on the finance committee and uh, whenever you're in the area please stop by and say hello bye bye congratulations eric on your retirement from the united methodist ministry i've been following your career since even before you went into the ministry and it's such a pleasure to see what a wonderful job you've done you've made such a wonderful contribution to the United Methodist Ministry, and I hope you enjoy your retirement. Hey, Pastor Eric, I wish you a wonderful retirement, and we're just so honored that you chose St. Andrews to be your final place to make your mark in your illustrious career, and I wish you all the best. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your beautiful life. Pastor Eric and Karen, we wanted to thank you both for all you've done for our church, for us personally, and um, all the time that we've been able to get to know you during your tenure here. It's been wonderful, and we wish you the very best in your retirement. Um, and we hope to see you again here sometime soon. It's been really great getting to know you. We really appreciate all you've done for us, and especially through this crazy last year and, and the effort that you've gone to to make that special extra effort and I know that uh, my family away from here uh, in Wisconsin has appreciated what you've done as well and they've been able to keep up with us so we really appreciate you helping enrich our lives and the lives of so many. We're going to miss you but we hope to see you around. Happy retirement Eric. We're going to miss you and Karen. Thank you so much for your help with the memorial services. We really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. And you already heard from me. See ya. <laughs> Hey Eric, happy retirement. I just want to give you some words of advice. Uh, when I moved out here after retiring from the military, my wife and daughter told me to go back to work. So don't let that happen to you. Um, and, and if it does, just take off your uniform like I did and look for ways to continue serving. Best of luck. Eric, congratulations on retiring. I think I probably gave you one of your first jobs where you got paid at the Methodist Church when we hired you for camp. And now, I get to see you retire out of a church we both served. Stop following me around. And, let's go to a Padre game. Happy retirement. Hi, Pastor Eric. The Whittington family just wanted to tell you how much we love you and how grateful we are for you. Of course, we wish you the absolute best on your retirement and I'm sure we'll be seeing you even more. <laughs> we love you. Yeah. Congrats, Pastor Eric. Thank you for everything. We love you. We'll see you soon. Much love from the Whittingtons. Congratulations and happy retirement, Eric.